Good morning. Good morning. Happy, Easter. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Oh, wonderful. And so have the snowbanks. <laughs> <laughs> it was really tough getting here this morning. I couldn't believe it. Good special welcome to all of you here. Those of you who are visiting with us, welcome as well. Those of you who are joining us online, we are thankful and grateful for you to be joining us here at Lord of Life in Bismarck. On behalf of uh, myself, Pastor John Stratius, and Pastor Beth, and the staff, uh, welcome and happy Easter to all of you. We are glad you're here today. Uh, we have a wonderful service ahead of us, and we are ready to celebrate Easter morning, regardless of whether it is another blizzard. Well, that's the way it is. Those of you who are still out in Arizona, way to go. Good decisions. Yes, if, uh, we, um, we have lots going on this week. Uh, next week is my installation and something called Holy Humor Sunday. The bishop will be preaching. Uh, come and check it out. It is a wonderful service for us. And today there is more to come. Thank you for all the musicians that we have this morning and for all of you tuning in. Blessing, blessed Christmas to you. Or blessed, oh, I did say it. Blessed Christmas to you. That is terrible. It is happy Easter, even though we just need to sh close the shades, look at the flowers. Oh my goodness, that was interesting. That was totally from the subconscious. Let's begin. Uh, let's begin with the greeting, right? Next slide. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen please, please rise as we sing together.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in joy and resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for our scripture readings. Our first reading is from Acts chapter 10. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Thanks be to God.
The second reading is from the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, then, his coming, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Children to come up for a children's message. Oh, there's a couple in the back. Great. Come on up. Don't be shy. Good morning. Happy Easter. You all look so nice and festive. So I'm going to just say it. We're going to do an Easter egg hunt here. How's that sound? woo -hoo. I, until like 10 minutes ago, I wasn't sure we were going to do that, but we are. So here's my only um, guidelines. Uh, help others find eggs and um, don't get hurt. They're all like in this area. So ready? One, two, three, go. Go find your eggs. Find your eggs and bring them back. <laughs> uh. <laughs> She found the treasure trove over there. <laughs> Just dragging it back. All right, I think you guys cleaned up pretty good here. All right, don't open them yet. Don't open them yet. Oh, there's some more over there. Well, oh, thank you for... There you go. All right, way to go. Even Kayla helped. Nice. So, you want to open them up and see what's inside? What do you got inside there? Candy, sweetness, anything else? I didn't pack these, so I really don't know. These are, these were packed by helpers. Thank you very much. Why do we have eggs on Easter? Anybody know? Well, what, what really comes in a real egg? It's, it's a new birth, right? I mean, an egg becomes a chicken or a duck or whatever animal it might come from. So eggs are always signs of new life and new birth. And I know it's blizzarding outside, but normally we might even see buds on the trees, the beautiful flowers. They're all signs of new life. So what does this new egg have to do with Easter? Yes! Thank you, Arthur! Jesus rose from the dead! And so he's no longer dead. And guess what happens? Once you eat that sweet treat, what is this? An empty shell. What does the empty shell remind you of? Right, the empty tomb, which we're going to hear about too. So the eggs really do have a connection to Easter besides being sweet treats. And I also think the sweetness of the treat that you receive inside reminds us of the sweetness of God's love for all of us, that Jesus isn't in the tomb anymore. He's not dead anymore. He's alive. And because he's alive, we get to live too and live and love like Jesus. Okay? So let's, let's, uh, <laughs> let's um, pray, and then you can take your eggs back. And if, and if you want, you can even share with those around you because there's lots of eggs. So let's pray. Dear Jesus... Thank you for loving us. Thank you, God, for raising Jesus to life. Bless us as we live our lives. In the name of the resurrected Jesus. Amen. Let's see if you can get those back to your chairs without dropping them. <laughs> and there's more here.
that's a good thing about only having a few kids show up. They get all the eggs. Well, sorry, parents. I mean, you can monitor what you need to monitor there. Let's please stand for the gospel acclamation. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. And while they were perplexed about this, suddenly, Two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified, and they bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the tomb, and they told all the eleven about this and all the rest. And now Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, and the mother of James, and the other with them, other women with them, who told them, who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them to be an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, and stooping and looking in, he saw the linen clothes by themselves. And then he went home, amazed at what had happened. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Well, dear members and friends and visitors today, out of darkness and chaos of death, God does something amazing. Something unexpected. God does the unpredictable. God raised Jesus from the dead. And all things are possible. The resurrection is a real thing. First for Jesus, and then one day for you and I. Easter changes everything. Do you believe it? Alleluia. Christ is risen. I know for some, the idea of an Easter egg hunt in our worship space may be a little chaotic and unpredictable and maybe even a little sacrilegious. But let me remind you that on that first Easter morning, things were pretty chaotic and it was a heck of a storm, worse than what we see today. For all the followers of Jesus, and especially for the women, life was chaotic, unpredictable, and very sacrilegious. The women were going to the tomb to prepare the body of their Lord Jesus for burial. Jesus of Nazareth spent three years of his life teaching the true love of God, preaching the truth of God's mercy and forgiveness. He healed the sick, the blind, and the lame. Jesus raised the dead. Jesus did nothing but bring God's love to light, an unconditional love and forgiveness without strings. And for all of this, he was betrayed, rejected, unjustly tried and condemned to death on a horrible cross. His friends betrayed him, abandoned him, and people turned on him. Truly, it was dark and chaotic, and it was sacrilegious. And by his death, we see the evil injustice, and we see the innocent suffering. We see love rejected. Jesus went willingly to the cross, and why? He did it for you, not as payment, but as gift. Not a transaction, but transforming gift from God, so that all would know the genuine transforming love 
this is not what anyone expected. Truthfully, the only predictable part of the story is the fact that everyone turned on Jesus. In the world that we live in of violence and sin and selfishness, we all understand too well how people turn and abandon each other. Mothers and fathers abandon their children. Friends turn on their other friends and betray them. It's not hard to predict that when things got rough for Jesus, everyone turned and abandoned him. And this little Easter egg hunt that I sent the children on may seem a bit foolish and silly for a worship service, but it also serves to illustrate what many of us see as life itself, as some sort of hunt or race for a prize we put so much energy and value on only to find that the prize we receive is empty and hollow, just a shell of what we might have hoped for, and the prize we get is sweet for a short time, but empty calories and no real nutrition. I don't want your life to be empty, and better than this, God does not want your life to be empty and hollow. And that is why God raised Jesus from the dead. He is alive. Death does not have the last word with Christ. God did not abandon Jesus. God did what God had planned to defeat sin and death and the devil and to raise Christ to life. Love wins with Jesus. Will you believe it? Today I am here because I know that God's love through Jesus could not and would not be derailed. God's love saves all of humanity from sin and selfishness. And God's love restores what was lost by violence and sin. And today we see God's love clearly at work doing the unexpected, doing the unpredictable, and for many of us, the unimaginable. God's love breaks the bonds of violence and sin, restoring the way to life. Today, love wins once and for all. Love wins. Will you believe it? Now, most of you here are not surprised to hear the claim made that Jesus rose from the grave. In many ways, haven't we domesticated the resurrection with Beautiful flowers and springtime, well, we try to get springtime, chocolate and bunnies and Easter eggs. We're so accustomed to hearing, Alleluia, Christ is risen. But I still have to prompt you to, to say it. And we don't even shout it, right? But let me ask an honest question. How does the resurrection claim change your life? If Jesus Christ was the first and only person to rise from the dead, never to die again, what difference does it make in your life today? How you live it, how you love, how you act each day. If God's love and forgiveness raised Jesus from the dead, what are the possibilities for our world? What are the possibilities for your life? Love came to this world pure and simple in Jesus. He taught mercy and forgiveness. He healed and accepted all people. Jesus was God's love in flesh and blood for all who to receive. And now if death cannot stop God's love in Jesus, what might that mean for you and me? What difference does it make in our lives today? How you live, how you love and how you forgive. Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen. No longer does sin and death have sway over us. Because of Easter, sin leads to forgiveness. And Easter is forgiveness for you. I claim that that forgiveness is not only possible, but that forgiveness is for each of you. First from the lips of Jesus, he was betrayed and abandoned and left to die. But Jesus, the rejected one, turned around and did the unimaginable. He forgave all those who abandoned him. 
Jesus forgave them completely and reinstated them as his disciples. Think about this. Forgiveness birthed the church. Jesus could have started all over with new disciples and never had them come back. But he did not. He forgave them and in that forgiveness transformed them, resurrecting them as well. I ask you, if such forgiveness were to be given to you, what would the possibilities be? How would that change your life? Because of Christ, because Christ is alive, each of you are a child of God, never to be orphaned. Because Christ is alive, you are forgiven all your sins. And God says, as far as the east is from the west, your sins are forgiven and remembered no more. Because Christ is alive, death will not have the last word for you. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life, and all who believe in me shall never die. Because Christ is alive, you are set free from sin and empowered to live and love and forgive others. Because Christ is alive, you are loved just as you are, accepted as you are, and forgiven. Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. All of this is possible because Christ is alive. All things are possible through Christ who strengthens you. Christ is alive and love wins. You are set free to live and to grow in Christ and to go as Christ to the world. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Amen. Please join in standing as we sing our hymn, Christ Has Arisen While Earth Slumbers. This is a new hymn, but we sing it to an old tune, in, uh, actually an, a Christmas tune, Infant Holy, Infant Lowly. <laughs> the whole church in all places and in all times, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. On this day of resurrection joy, let us offer prayers for ourselves, our neighbors, and our world. Lord Jesus, thank you for changing our lives and giving us hope and joy through your resurrection. Teach us how to share our hope and joy through our words and actions with others. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, thank you for allowing us to claim a measure of your peace for our own lives. Help us to use that peace to heal divisions between us with our family and friends, between nations, and in our country, state, and communities. Teach us to understand others, even as we ask them to understand us. Lord, in your mercy. Faithful God, thank you that we can come to you and ask for help for those who are struggling with human frailties and natural disasters. You know our needs and how to help us to recover from these struggles. Teach us to always look to you for guidance and help. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, thank you that we can know that you are with those who mourn or who are ill. We ask you to be with those on our prayer list and those we name in our hearts. Give them your peace and ease their pain. Lord, in your mercy. God, you have taught us that with you all things are possible. You have shown us that not even death has the final word in our lives. Thank you for your powerful, transforming, and everlasting love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Christ be with you always. And also with you. Take a moment to share that peace with one another. Although we won't be passing the offering plates this morning, we do give thanks for all of the gifts given to Lord of Life that we share within our midst and beyond the walls of Lord of Life. Our worship continues with uh, Let the Vineyards Be Fruitful. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen.
to take away our sin. When in, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. He who night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You may be seated. Today in our uh, uh, worship, we will be sharing uh, regular wafers. We also have gluten-free wafers. On the tray, you can receive red wine or white grape juice. Please follow the usher's instructions. And all are welcome. If you are a child and you take communion, please put your hands out for us to know. And if you do not, we will give you a blessing.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. May God, who has brought us from death to life, fill you with great joy. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. You are the body of Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. <laughs>